this video, we're going to talk about cleaning uh, the dust out of a Hades Canyon. As you will, may remember on, from the inside, there's no way to get to the blowers here. You don't see the blowers or the heat sink, so cleaning it appears to be difficult. But in most cases, a sufficient cleaning can occur simply by taking a can of compressed air and blowing through these vent holes and then primarily on the bottom, and I'm not sure if you can pick it up, but there's a blower here and there's a blower here. And so by simply correcting my compressed air flow in through these holes, I actually can clean the blades of the blowers. And then finally, the main cleaning is happens occurs with the uh, finned heat sink. And so simply by going across, you know, clean it out really well, uh, you can get sufficient cleaning. Now, while you may not re remove 100% of the dust, um, that's fine as long as you periodically do this. So let's say that you disassembled the unit and you cleaned it thoroughly. Well, then you may get away with cleaning it every, you know, four to six months. But if you use this blower method and not disassembling it, then you can get away with every three to, to five months, you know. So maybe it knocks a month off of cleaning because if you're in a dusty environment, it's going to collect quickly. And if you're in a clean environment, it's going to collect slowly. Um, and for the most part, using a compressed can of, of air is sufficient for cleaning, I would say, more than 95%. But we'll take this thing apart next and show how you can actually disassemble it. This will also show off the uh, heat sink and the processor, but mainly to show um, that if you wanted to uh, get to the blowers for service or for deep cleaning, how to do that, all right? And uh, there'll be some cut aheads to reduce time. This is going to be a full video showing the disassembly down to the blower fans and just as a reminder I'm wearing a uh, anti-static smock uh, this prevents my clothing from generating uh, static electricity and I'm wearing a uh, wrist strap that's grounded and I'm working on a conductive uh, rounded mat so that uh, no static is built up and touching the mat I discharge myself as well as uh, my wrist strap and so on. All right. All right, we're gonna take this plate off. And so you lift it out. And then this connector has some tape reinforcing the pool. So Reach down as far as you can, and you're gonna pull this connector straight up. This uh, is a one-sided, there's slots on this side of the connector and blades on that side. The other side has uh, just the wires. That removes this piece. All right, and then there's going to be five screws we're gonna remove. Uh, one in each corner next to the pin nuts that holds the top plate in, and then one right here. And these five screws are all the same, so you don't have to remember which one goes where. And they are different than the top plates, obviously, since they're Phillips head and the top plate is uh, an hex or Allen. And I'm just going to leave these four screws in their guide tubes and then uh, turn the unit over to dump it. All right, and then there's those four screws. A total of five of those as well. Try not to bump the camera here. All right. So um, you don't have to remove the dims, but I might uh, recommend it just so that you can grab the board easier. So spread those tabs apart and it ejects the uh, dims. Now, uh, the next challenge is, and then we're gonna remove this connector. Now on this one, to remove it, uh, I, I try to get down to the connector itself and we're going to slide it toward the back plate. I'm using my fingernails, uh, try not to pull on these wires. This is the quad array microphones. And so that got that piece off. And so next, um, 
So the motherboard is actually loose, but it's captured by the various connectors. And so the next step is that we're going to remove the plastic piece and then we'll be able to get the motherboard out. Um, so now we've got the microphones out and the motherboard is actually loose, but it's uh, the various, mainly the type C connectors, the RJ45 and the HDMI are kind of holding in place. And I found the easier way to get this out is first by turning it around. One end is easier to remove than the other. So I'm just, I'm just bowing this plate and trying to work it around. I believe it's, yeah, this end that's easier. So we'll get this started. And it's literally just, um, just kind of caught on the connectors. And uh, now this whole piece just comes up. We can set it aside. Now the motherboard is actually loose in here, but what's holding it in is it has to come straight up. <clears throat> because of the heat sink, we have to um, we can't uh, angle the back and go that way because the heat sink is hitting the blowers. And so it has to pretty much lift straight up. And to do that, there's some things that are holding it in. The MDP connector C protrude through this metal, uh, one of the RJ45s, and the this is gonna be the biggest problem. That protrudes through quite a bit. And then uh, the type C here a little bit, or I'm sorry, this type C. But um, there's two L metal right here. There's a bend and there's another bend and these will be your, your nemesis in getting this thing out. So what I found is kind of start at one end of the board. Let's see if I can, this was quite difficult to figure out. For, oh, before I do that, let me go ahead and unplug the two blowers. I'm grabbing these as far down as I can grab them. And we can actually get these out of the way. That blade, let's give this a try again. There's one and two. All right, now it comes straight up. And the fan connect, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the antenna connectors as well. Now the antennas, you need to use a flat blade and come straight up or I've got fingernails and so what you were trying to do is not angle it off you've got to pop it straight up I'm gonna get the antennas out of the way all right so there's the blower assembly I'm going to go get a Skull Canyon blower so you can see how much bigger these blowers are than the Skull Canyon uh, the Skull Canyon blower is is maybe this portion of it. It's it's a much smaller uh, blower. Uh, a result of this is I believe these in the, we have two blowers and we have much larger blowers, and and the result is we can spin these slower, and we can get more airflow. So uh, we could normally blow these. Uh, spin these let's say at half the rpms to get the same air but since we have two now we can spin them at a quarter of the rpms and so the net result is uh we're going to get much better cooling at a lower sound level all right and then here is the heat sink this is the processor now as i mentioned earlier uh do not remove these four screws don't remove the backer plate don't take the processor off now I know some of y'all are gonna be curious and wanna do that, but the reason I say that is, there is a series of FETs right here. I'll post a picture, a link to a picture, but there's a series of FETs here, which is a processor FETs, and they have a thermal gap pad in here, or silicon, and then they're going to have uh, thermal gap pads and uh, perhaps some uh, silicon grease, and there's various things, uh, are, these are engineered you know, and, and if possible, we don't want to take this off. You don't need to take it off to clean anyway. But as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, you can see now those fins and blow and, and these fins are pretty short. And so just blowing compressed in the air in here is sufficient for cleaning. I really didn't need to take this apart to clean it. And then for the blowers, of course, you can now get in here and blow 
these blowers out, but you can see the access to the blowers is almost the same as the access from the backside. So there really isn't any reason to uh, take this thing apart to clean it, all right? All right, so here's the Skull Canyon blower, and you can see that the diameter of the Skull Canyon, the, the blower's right about to here, and this blower's to here. So you can see that it's close to 50%, maybe about 40% larger in diameter, almost 50. Uh, the cavity is quite a bit larger to handle more airflow. The ingestion uh, openings are bigger. We get air through the front into the top of this and air into the bottom. And so by having the uh, more uh, air ingestion area, we produce less noise. So the Skull Canyon had a single blower, this blower, that was it for the Skull Canyon. The Hades Canyon has these two considerably larger blowers. So you're going to get a, a lot better cooling. These blowers can probably, I mean, one of these blowers could run at half the speed to get as much as this does at full speed. So this running at a quarter speed each gives us as much cooling as this at full speed. And so that's why the Hades Canyon is considerably quieter, is it has a lot of cooling area. I, I played a AAA game and the blowers at one point spun up, and while I was still playing, they actually spun down. So they actually spun up, they cooled the processor below the level needed to run the fan at the higher level, which wasn't full level, and then they, they spun down and they stayed spun down and um, you know, considerable time later, they spun back up, ran for about 20 seconds, spun back down. And so the, these have a much easier time cooling the processor so they don't have to stay spinning at high speeds even when you're doing heavy processor loads, all right? And I will try to shoot a video of the sound, but it's really hard because the air conditioning in this building is actually louder than uh, these fans. Uh, so I'll be turning the air conditioner off when I shoot that video. But anyway, this is a Skull Canyon comparison. Another look at the difference between the Skull Canyon's blower here and the Hades Canyon blower. And you can see that um, this blower is about the size of this air inlet. And of course the blower comes out. The blower actually comes right to this edge. So the blower's to about here. And so when I put this one lined up, you can see this blower is about 50% in diameter bigger. So considerable error. The way this is shaped is uh, right here, the blades get really close to the side and then as the air uh, is thrown out, there's a chamber and this chamber grows in size as it goes around. So more air can be thrown into the chamber and then the air comes out. So the air going through here goes out, but the air going through the blades at this point has gone all the way around. And that's why this grows in size as it comes around. So taking a look between the two, you can see the difference. This is a Skull Canyon, and there's only one of these in a Skull Canyon. And this is the Hades Canyon, and there's two of these. So if this gives us uh, probably close to double the airflow, then this running at full speed is this guy running at half speed. And since we have two of these, that means this guy, at, if it runs, if both of these run at a quarter speed, it's doing as much air as this one at full. This is cooling a 45 watt processor, and these two are cooling either a 65 watt or 90 watt uh, processor, actually a 100 watt processor. So, there you go.